Yay! Yay! All right, here's sort of an interesting proof of something that, you know, if you think about it, maybe this is just a little bit tricky. Um, and what we're going to do is let's prove... Uh, that the differential form of Gauss's law is true for point charges. Um, it's just sort of asserted that it's true, but let's let's prove it. And the reason that this is a little bit tricky um, is that we're going to uh, use the divergence. Um, so, I mean, normally, if I have if I have a, a point charge, right? We know what the electric field from the point charge looks like. It kind of points away radially. Um, but then you also might know uh, from calculus class that the divergence is a measure of how a vector field spreads. Um, really loosely speaking, um, it's sort of the idea that the divergence is what happens uh, by measuring some sort of a characteristic distance or average distance between like a, a test part. If I, if, if, if I spread test particles on a vector field, I want to see if they spread apart what their average distance is. And the thing is, if you look at the electric field, that certainly looks like a field that is diverging, right? The arrows, um, for heaven's sake, are diverging away from each other. So it's kind of tricky. It's interesting that the differential form of Gauss's law is that the divergence of the electric field is zero at some point in space out here, right? Um, that just, that seems a little weird because aren't those arrows diverging from each other? It sure looks like it. The key though, uh, for, uh, pr uh, let, let's be specific, prove that this is zero for, for the field of a point charge. Okay, here's the key. Yes, those arrows are diverging. Um, no question about it. But the key is that when you go far away, they're also getting smaller in magnitude, right? They're going down by the square of the distance. And so, yes, they're getting, the, those arrows are diverging sort of in angle, right? They're getting further apart from each other in some, in some angular sense um but they're getting sort of squashed together in the radial direction and those two things kind of cancel out that's what's sort of interesting um so maybe in a hand waving kind of a argument you can see that the diver the overall divergence uh this the, the 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 average distance between these sawdust particles um might not be changing even though the the distribution is going to look weird um as time goes on um but let's prove it let's prove it mathematically that this is going to be true because it looks like it, it certainly could be true but but let's prove it okay so what is the field from a point charge the electric field from a point charge is k q over r squared r hat right but i'm going to rewrite it as we've done before k q over r cubed r vector just from the definition of what a unit vector is uh, i can write it like that um, and that is KQ. Okay, I'm going to write a big vector. Uh, that's in, in uh, I'm going to write it over here. Hold on, let's just because this is going to take up some space. Um, the electric field is. KQ times. Okay, so I want this big vector. What is what is our vector? Our vector is just the vector of x, y, z, right? Um, what is r cubed? Um, okay, well, r squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared, just the distance squared. Uh, okay, so this vector, r vector, is just going to be x over r cubed x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the three halves there's the x component right and then the y component is just going to be y over this mess and then the z component z over x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the three halves 
Okay, so there's the full vector. There's the, the, the full vector. That's the electric field from a point charge. R vector over R cubed. Okay. Now, what is the divergence? The divergence of E is defined. How do I, how, how am I going to compute this thing? Well, the divergence is the partial of the X component with respect to X plus the partial of the Y plus the partial of the Z. All right. So let's do that. Um, we can do that. Let's look at this, just this piece. What is, um, I'll just bring it down here. What is the partial of the X component divided by X? Now forget about the KQ, right? That's just a constant that comes along for the ride. So what is the partial of that X component with respect to X? Okay, let's see. This is going to be the partial with respect to X of, uh, what do I have? I got an X times x squared because nobody ever uses the quotient rule plus c squared to the minus three halves right i got that okay so it looks like i just have like a product rule and then some chain rule stuff so let's do that i got um let's see the partial of the first thing times the second thing well partial of x is just one so this is just going to be one over x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the three halves. Well, I've already called that r cubed. So, um, I, well, let's go. Let's yeah, let's let's change that. So my first term is just going to be one over r cubed, right? When I take the derivative with respect to the x part first, I just get that thing that I was calling r cubed before. Now the second part, right? Then it's x times the derivative of the second piece. So I'm going to have, uh, oh, so what is the second piece? It's something to the minus three halves power. So when I take its derivative, I bring down that minus three halves. So I'm going to have a minus three halves. I still have my X, right, from the first factor. Um, and then I have that thing to the minus five halves. So this is going to be over that thing to the minus five halves is just going to be R to the fifth, right? Times the thing itself, the derivative of the thing. That's the chain rule. Uh, and what's the derivative of the thing inside the parentheses um, with respect to X? Just two X. Okay, so I think that's it. That's what my derivative looks like. Um, well, what's cool is the twos cancel. So what I'm going to get is one over r cubed minus three x squared over r to the fifth. Um, now it's a little bit worrisome because, I mean, what am I trying to find? I, I'm, I'm trying to find um, the divergence. I'm trying to prove that the divergence is zero. So the thing that makes me worried is um, well, I found the divergence of the first component. And a lot of times in physics, when you find that the, you know, some vector is zero, that means each of the components is zero, right? So what I sort of naively would expect is that if I'm trying to show this is zero, what, what ought to happen is that each of these derivatives is zero. And, and, and that would certainly prove it, right? Um, but that's not what's going on. That, that thing is certainly not zero. The, X, the derivative of the X component is certainly not zero. Um, so... Well, let's just bravely uh, soldier on and we'll see what happens. Because I haven't done the Y and the Z yet. But if you do in the Y and the Z, um, what you're going to get is exactly the same thing, except that you're going to get Y's and Z's instead of X's. So look, here's what I've got. The divergence of E is then, it's going to be this X thing plus the Y thing plus the Z thing, right? So I'm going to have uh, 1 over R cubed minus 3x squared over r to the fifth, and I'm going to have plus the same thing with the y's. Oops, it's important that this is a minus, minus 3y squared over r to the fifth, plus 1 over r cubed minus 3z squared over r to the fifth. 
Okay. Um, now this is starting to look a little bit more interesting because this is going to be uh, what combining terms that's three over r cubed. And then look at that other thing. That's going to be three x squared, three y squared, three z squared. So take the three out x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So this is going to be minus three times x squared plus y squared plus z squared. That's r squared. Look at that. 3r squared over r to the fifth. Well, look, r squared over r to the fifth, that's 1 over r cubed. Look at that, like magic. They have all sort of subtracted away. And sure enough, the divergence of the electric field due to a point charge is zero. But not in the way you expect. It's not because each of the components is zero. They added to be zero, right? This is true in three dimensions. Um, that's, that's really, that's really interesting. Um, so sure enough, even though, uh, at first glance, the electric field from a point charge, uh, it looks like it's spreading apart. So, you know, your naive understanding of divergence, uh, might be that, oh yeah, I would expect this field to have a divergence. Um, it turns out that it doesn't, it turns out for a really interesting reason that, um, that the spreading of those arrows is exactly counterbalanced by the fact that the arrows get shorter, um, means that this vector field has no divergence divergence um, is is a that's sort of a really interesting thing um, so this is the proof this is uh, something that is essential um, to everything that we do with Gauss's law but it's it's just seldom that you'd actually see it proven with the differential form so um, I thought maybe this is uh, kind of a valuable thing to go through